That's right, you read it, you know it, it's time for Pac-Man. So let's see our favorite characters. Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Stinky? Clyde. Yeah, that makes some, some fucking sense. Clyde. Anyways, this is probably one of the most well-known games around the world. Everybody knows the object of it, and you've all seen this screen before. So this game came out in October of 1980 in arcade cabinet style. This game blew everybody away. Before this, there was Space Invaders and Asteroids, and this was such a more intense, free-flowing game with full movement all over the place, and it was like it was different every time you played it. They were chasing you, you didn't know where to go, you had to hide, you had to maneuver, and you had to use precision every time you played it. So from 1980 to 1990, this game blew everything away. Yeah. It made $2.5 billion in quarter sales from 1980 to 1990. And it is still played widely to this day. You will go into an arcade if you can find one and you will see this game. It is the top. There are 30 different variations of it. Every single type of platform you could imagine has it. I have a few myself. I carved my pumpkin at Halloween as Pac-Man. It is just a phenomenon. It is the golden game of the golden era. I'll show you what I got of it. So this here was the first Pac-Man you could have in your house. Before this, you had it in arcade cabinet style. Made it by, designed by our main man, Toru Itawani, who also created Pole Position. So before this little Atari cartridge of it, there was the arcade cabinets, and they were phenomenal. You had a huge joystick, big screen, the color was great, it moved fast, and you know, those cabinets are basically like a massive computer with a TV screen. So they made this for at-home gaming, and you have your little Atari that just doesn't put out the power that those huge, those huge arcade cabinets put out. So people weren't so happy when they got home. The cool picture's on there, and you know, you have this see through Pac-Man, it's all flashy, and the movement's not the same, and it's just, it just wasn't good. It, it sucked. Pac-Man's amazing, but the Atari version of it sucks. So, that's probably not just Pac-Man, it was E.T. and other such games that created the 1983 crash of video games, which will probably never happen again. So, yes, let's take a look at the Pac-Man games that I have. So obviously you've been staring at for a minute now. I have the original Atari cartridge. Then we have Miss Pac-Man here. Miss Pac-Man was created after this Pac-Man because this one here, the characters could move a lot more. They, uh, they weren't in the same routine, so you couldn't trick them. You know, you had to be really on your toes because they were a lot more all over the place. So yeah, this one came out, then this one came out. I have it for Tangent. I don't have the uh, the licensed one. I have the two illegal ones. And uh, I also have this 110 and one cart that you've seen before. There is one on it. Let's fucking see what the name of it is here. It is, it's like Pac-Mania, I believe. Anyways, this has a Pac-Man on it. And obviously the reason why they put that logo on it is because Pac-Man sells. And the other ones I have are PlayStation Pac-Man World and... Pac-Man World Rally. This is kind of like your uh, your Mario Kart, but it's the Pac-Man style. It's okay. It, it's just it's it's very typical. Uh, nothing special about it. But yeah, so those are my Pac-Man games. Whoa, she fell over. Yeah, that's uh, that's my whole collection. So to beat the original Pac-Man, or to get the highest score, you have to get 3.3 million and clear 256 screens. That's some perfection. That's some precise moves. I don't think I have that in me to do it, but I will sure try. You guys, have a great day, and don't forget Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde. Have a great day. Groovy Movie, signing off.